A Catholic church in Ontario has been violated in the worst way possible. Does Canada's Prime Minister even care? Does anyone? It's been a full day since the heinous hate crime and this might be the only place you hear about it. The Bishop of St. Catharines, Ontario is pleading with thieves who stole the tabernacle and its sacred contents off the altar of the St. Catherine of Alexandria Cathedral. The Catholic Register has the full story today and as a Catholic myself this is absolutely terrible to read. The tabernacle can be replaced. It's the contents that is what is so precious to us. That's what's irreplaceable, said Bishop Gerard Burgi, adding that he hopes that no harm is done to the Blessed Sacrament. He hopes that the person or persons who took the tabernacle realize it's not of any monetary value and be able to return it to us. No questions asked if they return it, he said. Video footage captured two people believed to be a man and a woman breaking into the cathedral at approximately 4.30 a.m. September 8th. As it was dark, the footage is kind of grainy and it has been difficult to determine a clear image of the suspects, Burgi said. Many people have taken to loitering near the cathedral in recent months, Burgi explained. Even yesterday, the man that's our caretaker said he noticed two fellas that were staying around all day outside sleeping and eating, he said. I don't know if they're involved. It's hard to tell, said Burgi. Father Donald Lizotti, rector of the cathedral, told the CNA that he believed the thieves had previously cased the cathedral to determine how to steal the tabernacle. And they came back later and actually pried the cover, which is over the old metal tabernacle, he said. They pried that off and put it on the floor. They took the brass doors off of that and then finally took the entire tabernacle off the altar. He told the CNA that the police were unable to find fingerprints and they believe the thieves had wiped the scene clean. Wiping the scene clean of fingerprints. Casing the th cathedral the day beforehand. Well, that sounds a little too organized and savvy to be the work of desperate meth heads to me. Now, I'm going to give you a quick Catholic catechism primer, not because I'm trying to proselytize you. I'm Catholic, that's not really our style anyway. But I'm telling you these things because I think our non-Catholic friends need to understand the absolute significance of what just happened here to the parishioners of St. Catherine of Alexandria Cathedral. The tabernacle, the thing that was stolen here, holds the hosts, the communion bread and the wine. Okay, so what's the big deal about a fancy bread box that holds unleavened bread and sort of okay wine? Well, for us Catholics, once the bread becomes consecrated by the priest, it undergoes the process of transubstantiation. It's a big word, but for us Catholics, that means it's no longer just bread and wine, but rather the actual, not symbolic, but actual body and blood of Christ. So when these thieves walked into a Catholic church and stole the tabernacle, for us Catholics, it means these thieves have stolen the actual body and blood of Christ. It's traumatic and horrific for this church. And I think this theft was absolutely targeted because the thieves walked past the chalice, the monstrance, things that are often made of gold. The thieves did not take the collection box and instead stole the one thing that has actually no monetary value to a common street thug. They stole Jesus. And I don't want to sound conspiratorial, but I would be remiss to say that this is not a completely uncommon occurrence happening to Catholic churches all across the world. In 2014, the Archbishop of Oklahoma City sued a satanic group, the Church of Araman, because that satanic organization had stolen a single communion wafer. Eventually, the lawsuit was dropped because that satanic organization returned the communion wafer that they admitted they had hoped to use in a satanic black mass. In India in 2012, the Diocese of Kenner suspected that their communion hosts had been stolen by Satanists. In 2015, in Pamplona, Spain, a Spanish artist named Abel Ascona stole more than 240 consecrated communion wafers by pretending to receive communion at mass. 
He then used the stolen communion in a publicly funded art installation. You see under the new rules, you can desecrate a Catholic sacrament to be edgy and get public money to do it because that's art. Just don't draw a picture of the Prophet Muhammad or you'll be permanently cancelled for your intolerance or much worse, like what happened to French publication Charlie Hebdo. And besides the major fires in European churches and cathedrals that we've heard about here in the Western world, in early 2019, in just one week, four Catholic buildings were desecrated in France, including a 13th century church in Dijon that was broken into. The tabernacle was opened and the consecrated bread was then placed all over the floor. Now, I'm not even saying that these things are being done by real Satanists or just a bunch of LARPers in black nail polish, Marilyn Manson t-shirts and red eye shadow, or even done by leftist busybodies pretending to be edgy by picking on those who are literally called by their faith to turn the other cheek. However, it is an international problem that the mainstream media isn't paying attention to because, well, you know, the victims are the wrong kind. But getting back to the violation of the Congregation of St. Catherine of Alexandria Cathedral, in St. Catharines, Ontario. In Canada, we have a prime minister who denounces every hate crime that ever happened to a mosque or Muslim, as he should, but he even does it when the hate crimes aren't even real, but rather hoaxes perpetrated for attention, like when Justin Trudeau famously and loudly denounced the Asian man who snipped at a young girl's hijab on her way to school, that Asian man didn't exist and the snipping never happened. It was all fake for attention and Justin Trudeau never apologized for it. And yet Canada's Prime Minister is someone who claims to be a Catholic. However, I'm not sure by what metric he measures that. I guess anybody can identify as anything these days in liberal land. But have you at home heard anything from our so-called Catholic Prime Minister about this hate crime? A very real hate crime against the Catholic community in St. Catharines, Ontario? Is the mainstream media as on fire about this hate crime as the fake hijab hoax one? I'm filming this video over 30 hours after the incident and Justin Trudeau hasn't said a single word. We have an update to this story since I first recorded it Wednesday afternoon. And the news comes to us from the St. Catherine's Standard. According to Margaret Jong, she's the Vice Chancellor of the Archdiocese of St. Catherine's, following a noon mass of reparation held by Bishop Gerard Burgi on Wednesday, a parishioner was approached by an unidentified man who handed him one of the doors from the tabernacle. Jong said the parishioners then took it upon themselves to search throughout the remote areas of the city in hopes of recovering the rest of it. They found the tabernacle and pieces of the ciborium, so that's what covers the Eucharist, partially submerged in the old canal that runs through Centennial Gardens. A few men who were working at the cathedral went to retrieve it and they used the same shopping cart to return it that was used to take the tabernacle away. It's recovered, but of course it's broken. Jong said one of the doors is missing and church members continue to hope it too will be returned. So friends, that's kind of good news. But once again, the contents of the tabernacle, the consecrated Eucharist, the valuable part of the tabernacle was not recovered. And yet, still no word from our Prime Minister about this anti-Catholic hate crime in Ontario. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. The mainstream media doesn't like these sorts of stories about real victims of hate crimes because, well, they're the wrong kind of victim. But at Rebel News, it's our job to tell you the other side of the story. Now, one of the best ways to help us do that doesn't actually cost you a dime. Just like and share this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the little bell so you never miss a story, and do consider becoming a subscriber to Rebel News Plus. That's what we call our premium long-form TV-style shows here at Rebel News. Just go to rebelnews.com slash subscribe to join today.